Hey there, and welcome to this deconstruction of Charlotte. My name is Bobby, and you might be familiar with me from Tentacle Car Let's Plays or our weekly podcasts. If not, welcome. You should check those out at tentaclecar.com or right here on YouTube. Anyways, I just watched the finale of Charlotte yesterday, and it didn't sit right with me. There's something about it that just was off-putting, and I wanted to take a moment to deep dive into all the things that this series could have been, what we ended up getting, and why I think it just wasn't that good. First off, Charlotte's a show I started watching immediately upon airing in the summer 2015 season. The premise sounded great, the art was stunning, and I hadn't ever watched anything I knew as Jun Maeda's work, so I had no idea what he was known for. The premise was actually kind of an interesting setup for a fun slice-of-life drama-styled series. These kids are like defective X-Men. They've got powers, sorta. They're powerful and mighty and also totally helpless if you can find the thing that makes their powers totally blow. Let's gather them together into a school. X-Men, am I right? I didn't mind that it was a school setting, or that the premise had its possibility to be hokey, because it seemed fun. They had layered on tension with the evil scientist, which was a pretty good hook, and they got serious in the story with Now's brother and the downsides of what could happen and what could go wrong with your powers. It swung right back to fun by adding on a pop idol to the cast, because Japan. It's fun, it's a little serious, and there are threats, but we can kind of keep them distant while we work to build these characters and their interplay as a cast. That's cool. Now, let's have three weeks of Flavor of the Week episodes. At the time, I was disappointed in those because they seemed to kind of distract from the main premise of the show. The characters that they focus on in these episodes never end up coming to the school. They just kind of give up and promise never to use their power again. And that's that. Without knowing what happens later in the series, it feels a little weird and too easy. Like, they just give up for no good reason. That's okay, because these episodes do have some fun set pieces, and at least you seems to be developing as a person, now is getting a bit of a character, you Serena's kawaii desune, and Takajo is kind of creepy and weird. That's okay, though. It's cool, as a cast they're fleshed out. And Ayumi sits around, makes food with pizza sauce, and is too cute to even try to condescendingly kawaii at her. This cast is just fun. See, what I liked about the show even at this point is that I thought it could go two ways. There's a fun slice-of-life character drama built in, or a game of stakes with the scientists. Maybe you even combine those into one show. And you can explore how this ragtag bunch with their not-so-super powers and their wits outgun the scientists. Maybe there'd be some losses, maybe there's some tragedy and death, but in the end, perhaps they win. Hell, they could even actually lose and get chained up and die slaves of science, but at least you show them trudging on valiantly to that fate. At least you show them developing in the face of that possibility. Instead, we got, well, this thing. From here on, there's going to be huge spoilers for the show in its entirety, so go watch it if you plan on it. If you don't plan on it, or you already have, then stick around. So the direction that they ultimately took is the Jun Maeda one. You know, Angel beats Jun Maeda, the dude who kills characters with no remorse. But here's the thing, if that alone was what happened, that would be okay. The character drama needs, well, drama. Killing any of these characters makes sense because you show how they adapt to the situation, you show how they cope with the loss, and then you show how they move on, or if they move on at all. So after two decidedly good episodes at the beginning of the run, they spend three weeks on that flavor of the week concept, they show these new characters that don't really matter, and then they decide it's time for a feels train. So they kill poor little Ayumi. She gets a power, conveniently, right when the plot needs her to be important. And then it just happens that her power, it just kind of helps make her die. That's it. Collapse is given to Ayumi at this point in the show, solely sh so she can die. The most likable person on the show, the one shown to be strong in the face of the ill-explained Japanese anime dilemma of kids without parents, just fucking dies. She gets a power, and then she accidentally squishes herself over some school bullshit that's just rushed into place that very same episode. Cool. So then Yu goes nuts, and it makes sense, because he's got a sister complex. That's fine. His descent is actually really well done if, like so many other things on this show, it's kind of rushed, because nothing can last longer between the space uh, that is, exists between the opening theme and the ending theme. 
So he broods, he reads manga at a manga cafe, he eats pizza, he threatens bullies with eye piercings, and does a line or two of cocaine. Because why not? This is character drama, though. This is interesting. A selfish prick who used his dumb power to cheat on tests gets depth and emotion. Now hides in the background watching him trying really hard to bring him to his senses, and she does. And it's a nice serene moment of emotional depth in a series that ends up nullifying all of its emotional depth. He loves now, but he doesn't quite know that until she snaps him out of his downward spiral. And then, the next episode, it's back to normal. They're back at school. But now wants to see the end, which is apparently a band. She listens to them here and there during the series, and hey, she's going to take you. Cool. That's depth. They have a relationship of sorts. Okay, this could lead somewhere. You just happens to bump into the lead singer of the band, who is blind. Foreshadowing. And she just happens to hang out with him, Kira Now's crazy brother, the character whom, in the end, solely exists to show us that scientists are bad. He's serene, though, and now you and Now can hang out and enjoy the concert. This is pretty cool, until, somehow, Sarah, the lead singer who's also blind, triggers some sort of vision or something that magically takes the early on mentioned but almost never spoken of flashbacks of you having a brother and makes him realize, oh shit, I do have a brother. And he conveniently just drops into the plot as though he's parachuted right in from fuck all nowhere. Hooray! He's blind, like the singer who conveniently ironed all the interesting wrinkles right out of the fucking plot. Cool. This might be okay, but he's here with a proclamation. The school they all go to is a convenient creation of time travel. Now, here's how I feel about time travel as a plot device. Done well, it's great. You explain it well, you make a logical set of mechanics, create limits that make it logical to use, but not always the best solution, and it works. The problem is that no one ever fucking does it. This is where the show descends into nothing. It could have been far more interesting, but now that time travel is introduced, well, time to just finish ironing ironing all the interest right out of this plot, until it's just a flat, boring thing. Hugh's brother is a time traveler who made the school. He's blind because his power robs him of sight each time a little bit, and he fucked up so many times that his eyes are just done. I assume every trip in time is to a story more interesting than the one we ultimately get stuck in, but that won't stop him from trying to shit up the whole thing even more. Because, conveniently, the true nature of Yu's power is to loot powers. He's a fucking bandit, and it turns out all those Flavor of the Week episodes were him just stealing powers without even fucking knowing it. Cool! So now, you is just a dangerous bad guy, but we can fix it, guys. He just has to steal time travel from his brother Shinsuke, and he'll get to fix everything. So back he goes, bringing back his sister and completely undoing everything good that came out of that. Now doesn't remember saving him from his descent or anything, but just decides, eh, fuck it. This ship is setting sail, because why not? So now the bad guy isn't even science, because we need to cure teens the world over, not from bad taste or poor attitudes or shitty test scores, but comet dust. Seriously, the whole name of the series is dumped into your lap as Charlotte of the Comet, which somehow gets closer to the surface when it flies over and magically comet dusts all over adolescent youth, turning them into dollar store superheroes. Fuck! Fuck me! What the fuck is that? But, there's an antidote, and that's what Big Brother Shunsuke has been doing all this time. I'm skipping over the plot contrivances like memory erasing, and the now complete irrelevance of the original story, because hey, Jun Maeda did... So now we have three episodes to wrap this shit train up. Kumagami, who was around the whole time as a power-fetching water zombie, is suddenly a front-and-center character because Big Brother always finds him when he jumps around time. He gets kidnapped, and now the Mafia is the villain. They also take Nao, who gets stripped to her panties for some reason, fan service. And now her and Kumagami are stuck until Yu gets there. Oh, and they'll die if the Mafia can tell they time-skipped. How would they know?! No, seriously, Jun Maeda! Fucking tell me how would they know? The main mafia guy speaks English, because of course he does. He can't speak any language well, so how is he gonna fucking know if a time skip happens? Anyways, Yu shows up, because he stole Collapse from Ayumi because Siscon, and now has all the power of the Flavor of the Week powers, so naturally, he uses them on the regular adults, conveniently ignoring the ability user that is on the Mafia side for who fucking knows why, and gets his eye slashed, ending his ability to time leap because it uses his eye, but not his looting ability, which also uses his eyes. Why? 
I don't know. Maybe because this train wreck needs to get worse somehow. He gets all bothered by this, so naturally, he collapses, and Kumagami, who we know as Water Zombie, just got plot development this episode, fucking dies because of course he does. Of course he does. Now still alive because fuck you, the ship is setting sail. The Mafia was apparently just two clumsy adults and one ability user, and whatever happens to them is irrelevant, because fuck you, viewer, they're off camera now, so fucking forget they exist, okay? So Yu recovers, Shinsuke's friends emo glare at him over his totally accidental causing of Kumagami's death, and we sit around establishing that Yu can't eat unless fed, can't ta time travel to fix it, and now they're stuck in this fate. Now we worry about the fate of ability users the world over who will come to steal away Yu, which doesn't even make sense, because a comet would have only flown over half the planet anyways, so how the fuck are there ability users everywhere? What the fucking fuck, Maeda-san, you're fucking killing me! But... That's fine, because we only have one episode left, and Yu has an idea. He's gonna travel around the world with only less than a year of power time left, because apparently, when your balls drop or your tits poke out enough, you're just done being a Rada action figure and get to be a boring adult. And he's gonna steal everyone in the world's powers! Really, that, that's the real story. I couldn't make that up if I tried. One fucking episode to go completely around the world, stealing powers from thousands of people, alone. And he does it. Episode 13 opens, and he's gone. There's more English, there's more powers. He finds someone who can do a better version of Kumagami's power, because of course he does. And a power that makes it so he doesn't have to sleep, because of course he does. The more powers he gets, the more his brain gets mushed up, and he basically forgets everything! He only holds on because of a phrase book that now gave him, and he doesn't even know why he fucking cares about it. In Cuba, he gets mad and kills his cell phone to death, and naturally it happens while he's getting a call from Big Bro Blind Guy, because of course. In the end, he becomes a god with the power to heal, which he steals from a village healer in the third world, because fuck you, poor-ass peasants, I've gotta fuck this hot schoolgirl! He literally thinks about it for a second and says to himself, Well, I made a promise, and I'll just take her power here while she has a line of people who need healing, and fucking steals her power. In the end, he lands in China, takes his last power, while a guy is shooting at him with a crossbow. This in itself wouldn't be so bad if they didn't have a scene minutes before this, literally minutes before this, where he gets shot by five guys with automatic rifles and a rocket, and comes out completely unscathed. But one dude with a crossbow, and that dude wins. He has a healing power which can restore his eye, which we know because he calls it out. He fucking tells us he can restore his own ability to time leap, and then goes, oh well, I'm just gonna keep going as is. Fucking why are you doing that, you dumb piece of shit? Heal yourself and bring us all to the past when the show had potential to be good! Then... Magically, a helicopter is here, which is okay because the last power girl wanted to save him and she says she'll call the authorities, but it's not them. It's fucking Big Brother Son and the Power Teen Brigade, none of whom have powers because fuck you for watching the show all the way through. We then arrive back in Tokyo, Yu's in bed, basically a one-night omnipotent god who has no fucking memories, which erases all of the plot progression we made in 13 fucking episodes. But... Magically remembers the note cards. Now cries about it. Yu goes, ha ha, I don't know anything anymore because I have all the powers. And we all laugh while the show fades to black. Oh wait. We see Now's brother one more time, somehow with an autographed Z-End CD. Ha, ha, get it? Z-End? Z-End? It sounds like the end, am I right? <laughs> Even though with all the time leaps made, he actually never met the lead singer. So what? Does she just transcend time skips? What in the flying fuck is this shit, Maeda? It was a show, in the end, that hooked me with its premise. It had potential to be something really interesting if it took any number of different paths available to it. Instead, the show erases its own plot, and at moments actively teaches the viewer that nothing you're watching matters because Maeda can erase it if he wants to. Hell, the healing power in episode 13 is a deliberate tease of erasing the shitty ending, but we can't possibly use the timely power to bring about positive change in this shithouse back half of a story. In the end, it felt rushed, but even if it got 24 episodes, or even just 5 more episodes in the end, 
If this is the direction that Jun Maeda was going to go with the show, would you even really want that? I wouldn't. This was a show that started with an interesting premise, layered characters, a little bit of humor, and even into the start of the second half had some cool intriguing moments and character development, just to completely shit all over it with a rushed ending, nonsensical villains, and illogical, not even half-baked, totally tacked-on time travel bullshit. I really wanted to like Charlotte in the end. It seemed like it had something cool and interesting, but by the end, it just ran out my goodwill. Watch it if you want to see a show with interesting characters meandering around in a story where nothing matters. Watch it if you want to see cool art and a consistent level of visual quality. Just don't expect it to feel like your time was respected at the end of the full run.